I'm talking with uh, Derek Sandhouse, author of Drunk in China, a new book about Baijiu and Baijiu culture in China. The Amazon summary says he examines the many ways in which alcohol has shaped Chinese society and its rituals. He visits production floors, karaoke parlors, hot pot joints, and speakeasies. It sounds like this must have been the most fun book to write. It was a joy. It was at times taxing um, emotionally and physically, but uh, I'm happy that it will be released today for audiences in the United States and elsewhere. So what do you look for when you look for a baijiu? <laughs> well, at a restaurant in China, usually I'll bring my own bottle because that's going to be your safest option and you can usually control what you're drinking, but it's usually more polite, I think to order from a restaurant in the United States. Uh, here we've got three different styles of Red Star Arguato. Um, and it looks like besides that, they've got Confucius Wisdom, which is uh, run by a guy named uh, David, David Joe, out of, uh, I think, Potomac, Maryland, is where he's based. So you've got three light aromas from from uh, Red Star and the strong aroma Confucius Wisdom, which I think is made in Chufu in Chandong. Yeah. Not only does Derek write about Baijiu, he also produces Baijiu. He has partnered with Lu Zhou Lajiao, a distillery with 500 years of history, to produce Ming River and sell it in the U.S. Okay, now I'm recording. Okay. I had this idea in my head going into it that Baijiu was one drink, like with beer. Mm, yeah. Right? Baijiu is like kind of the Chinese liquor like equivalent word that you would say like um, Chinese food and uh, different parts of China make different kinds of Baijiu, very different drinks that taste very differently to one another. Baijiu kind of grows out of the culinary tradition of the regions where it's from. So there Really, like people that are making this style of baijiu, what they're trying to do is create the perfect combination of flavors to balance out the the food the food of that region. I think a big, an important thing to do when you're when you want to experience baijiu at its best is to figure out where the baijiu that you're drinking comes from uh, and pair it with the food, or at least the, the, that kind of a. Flavor. Flavor. I like the flavor of Baijiu. I enjoy drinking Baijiu now, but more than I enjoy drinking Baijiu, I enjoy the experience of drinking Baijiu. Um, like if, if this were a restaurant in China and we were drinking Baijiu together, um, the night would reach at a certain point the uh, state that they uh, call Runao in Sichuan. Uh, where it just kind of gets uh, loud and hot, where you've been drinking for a while, you've been eating for a while, you're kind of drunk on the spice, you're drunk on the liquor, and you're, you know, in this mood of like kind of pure joy. And once you get there, usually, and it, it's an open invitation both ways. Usually at like a really lively Chinese restaurant, um, you can kind of bounce around a little bit. You can go sit at a stranger's table and make a toast to them and invite them to join in your, your, your joy and your celebration. And vice versa. Um, people have often like sat down at my table with a bottle of Baito and just, you know, started talking. It's this kind of wonderful, uninhibited, like, communal experience. And and really if you look at alcohol in China, that that is how it's always been. Going back, you know, seven, nine thousand years, people have always been using alcohol to kind of create this this sense of uh, shared revel revelry and connection. 